Sparkies, Miss Joy here again. I'm excited to bring you another lesson from God's Word tonight. So before we begin, let's fold our hands, close our eyes, and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this night and for all these Sparkies here. I pray that you would bless our evening and help us to have good listening ears as we learn another one of your truths from your Bible. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so tonight I'm going to bring you another story about Chloe Jacob and Joel. Remember a couple weeks ago we had a story about them with the new kittens that Chloe had? Well, this week is another story about these kiddos. So listen up. I'm going to read it to you. Hey, Chloe, Jacob, look, Mr. Anderson is walking Muffy. Let's go see him. Joel ran down the street to the Andersons' house and Chloe and Jacob followed. Muffy is so white and fluffy. Chloe hugged the tiny dog. Muffy wagged her tail and barked at Chloe. She sure likes you. Mr. Anderson patted his dog on the head. Of course, she likes all people as long as they aren't mean to her. She likes to be around people more than she likes to be around other dogs. Chloe sighed. I wish we could get a dog. Dad and Mom said we can't because of my brother's allergies. Allergies can be a problem, Mr. Anderson agreed. <clears throat> Well, my parents say we can't get a dog until I'm older because they're a lot of work. Jacob stomped his foot. Your parents are right, Jacob. You need to feed them and let them out and then take them to the vet. Not only are they a lot of work, but they can be expensive. Mr. Anderson looked at Muffy. Right, Muff? You cost lots of money. Muffy kept wagging her tail as if to say, but I'm worth it. I'm getting the dog, Joel announced. Chloe and Jacob looked at their friend. Joel, you never told us you're getting a dog. What kind are you getting? Mr. Anderson asked. Don't know yet, but my birthday is coming up and I decided that's what I want. Mr. Anderson laughed. You decided that's what you wanted, so you know that's what you're getting? <clears throat> well, yeah. <clears throat> I'm praying about it, and Mom always says God answers prayers. Do your parents know you're praying for a dog? Mr. Anderson sat down in his front steps. Yes, they said they didn't want to get a dog right now, but I figured if I pray hard enough, I can get one anyway, right? That's not the way God works. Chloe shook her head at her friend. Mom says we're to pray that God does what's best for us in all things. Chloe's right, Joel. God isn't in the business of wish granting. He wants what's best for us, and he wants us to be happy in any situation. Mr. Anderson paused. Remember when that missionary family visited church a few weeks ago? I do, said Jacob. They came to our house for lunch. I liked them. At lunch, they told us even more missionary adventures. Remember they told us about the village they visited? The people weren't allowed, <clears throat> the people weren't even allowed to have a Bible. Someone snuck one in and they tore the pages from the binding so all the Christians could have at least a few pages of God's word. And they sang praises to God because they had at least one complete Bible, even though the pages were shared by all the families, Joel said. Right, the Bible was the most valued thing they owned. They're poor and they live in shacks, yet the Bible is more important to them than anything else. Hmm, if I can't pray for a dog, what can I pray for? Joel asked. Hmm, no one said you shouldn't pray for a puppy. Mr. Anderson slapped his leg and Muffy jumped into his arms. You can thank God for puppies, but also tell him you know that your dad and mom don't want you to have one right now and that you're okay with that. And said Jacob, you can thank God that the Andersons live on our street and they let us play with Muffy. Muffy barked as if to say, good idea. <coughs> so Sparkies, what are we to pray about? This is a good lesson. And Mr. Anderson was right. God isn't in the business of granting our requests like they were wishes. You know, when you make a wish when you blow out your birthday candles, God doesn't just grant anything. He doesn't say yes to all things. Mr. Anderson is right. 
God is in the business of giving the things that are best for us. So what are we to pray about? Well, there is a verse in the Bible that talks about that. And I have it right here. It's 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18. And it says, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Pray continually. Wow, that's a long time. So what are things that we can pray about if we're supposed to pray continually? And give thanks in all circumstances. Let's talk about the first one, praying continually. Well, here are some things that we can pray about. First thing is, we can pray about staying away from sin. Second thing is, living the way God wants me to live. That's a good thing to pray about. Sometimes it's hard to make those right choices and live the way God wants us to live. That's something we should pray about. Number three is telling others about Jesus. There are people that we know maybe from school, maybe our neighbors who may not know Jesus. And we need to pray about telling them about Jesus. Number four is being courageous for the Lord. Praying that God would give, give us strength and courage to be able to tell others about Jesus. Sometimes we might be a little bit shy to do that. We might be a little bit nervous, but God can give us the bravery and the courage to be able to tell others about him. And number five, praying for each other, praying for our parents, praying for our leaders, praying for our teachers, praying for others is a big one. There are a lot of people that we know who, who would need our prayers. A lot of people might be having um, some sickness or they might be going through a time that's kind of hard and we can pray for them. That is the best way that we can help them is by telling their requests to God and praying for them. That's, a, that's another big one. So <clears throat> this verse, though, praying continually, wow. That would almost mean that if we started a prayer to God, we may not even have to say amen because we could just be talking to him all the time. But sometimes we do say amen when we're at like the dinner table or at lunch or breakfast. We're praying for our food or praying right before bed. Sometimes we use amen, but God is always there and he's always got his listening ears ready for us to be praying to him. That's the way we can talk to God. Remember, we can pray anywhere, anytime, any place and about anything. So if you're in the car, you could totally pray to God. You're in the shower, you could totally pray to God. You're in bed and you may, might be struggling going to sleep, might be nervous about some dreams, you can totally pray to God. He's there, he's listening, he's ready to hear what you have to say. We should always pray though, that we want what God wants for us. Instead of praying for all the things that we would like, we need to make sure that we're praying excuse me, that we're praying that we want what God wants for us because we know that what God wants for us is the best thing. We call that asking for his will. You sometimes have heard people, maybe you've heard people say, oh, I just want God's will to be done. And it's hard to know what God's will is, but we know that God's will is what is best for us. Even though we don't know what that is, we can trust God that he's going to do the best thing for us. Remember too, that we are to be thankful. That's what that verse eight, that next verse said. The first verse says, pray continually. But that next verse says, give thanks in all circumstances. That's being thankful, giving thanks because everything we have is from God and he is there ready to hear us when we pray. And we need to be thankful. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. He wants us to pray continually, rejoice always, and give thanks in all circumstances. So we need to practice praying continually, and we need to practice rejoicing and giving thanks. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for these promises and these commands from the Bible. Please help us as we go through our week to remember to rejoice always, to pray continually, 
and to give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I will see you next week. Bye. Thank you.